We've configured authentication with GitHub and added an SSH key so Jenkins jobs can access our GitHub repositories. So now let's see how to create pipelines within our Jenkins Blue Ocean interface so we can start a continuous integration process with our applications. Now if we head on over here, I'm going to install one more plugin, and that'll be the Blue Ocean plugin that's going to give us the newest UI, the Blue Ocean UI that Jenkins has. So I'll manage plugins, available. I'm just going to search for blue. And you'll see there's actually a bunch of Blue Ocean plugins, but all we need is the main one here because it'll grab any other ones it needs as a dependency. So we'll install that and we'll get a big list of stuff that it will start installing. Now, for me, sometimes this has stopped working. So eventually some of the pending ones don't ever stop not saying pending. In this case, it did work, so that's perfect. But my Jenkins has gone a little wonky before at this step. And I usually just wait a while and then eventually click the restart button, which will only restart once it finishes installing stuff. So once we finish restarting Jenkins, we'll see that this will refresh and we'll have a button to go into the blue ocean area. Okay, so this restarted. I'm gonna go to open blue ocean. Cool, so welcome to Jenkins. It's time to create your first pipeline. So pipelines in Jenkins are the different steps you take when you uh, kick off a build or a task. So the general idea here is that this will read your organization and all repositories inside of it. It'll find repositories that have a Jenkins file. If it does not have a Jenkins file, it ignores it. If it has a Jenkins file, then it will see that it's a valid repository that it can work with. And then it'll run jobs within a pipeline based on your Jenkins file. Now the pipeline is just different steps. So in your Jenkins file, in your repository, you can define the steps like building, testing, and pushing to production or something like that. So if we create a new pipeline, we have a few options here. Where do you store your code, Git or GitHub? I imagine this will also support Bitbucket, but I'm not sure how exactly. You might need a separate plugin for that. I'm gonna go right for GitHub. And I imagine this only says GitHub because out of the box, you get the GitHub plugins like we did because I had it installed the default set of plugins. If you have a Bitbucket plugin, I think you'll see Bitbucket show up here, but I don't know for sure. Okay, so GitHub. Now connect to GitHub with your personal access key. So despite the fact that we technically could get API access to Git through the authorization plugin, this is a separate plugin to talk to GitHub through the pipeline. And the GitHub authentication plugin doesn't necessarily connect or talk to this other plugin, even though it's still related to GitHub, but it doesn't talk to this other plugin to get API access. So we actually need to give a personal access token to this plugin for GitHub to speak to GitHub over the API. So that's another user level thing. So for personal access tokens under my shipping Docker user, you can see I have uh, an old one. I have the shipping Docker blue for my production one. I'm gonna generate a new token here, service for hackers, Jake and CI. For permissions here, we're gonna add all under repo, all under admin repo hook, under admin org hooks or organization hook and also repository hooks, and then the user one. It technically only needs user email, but I'll use these as well, I'll just use all of them. So generate the token. Copy and paste that, head on over here, we can paste that in. And now, which organization does the repository belong to? So does it want just for the user shipping Docker or the entire organization shipping Docker? I'm gonna select the organization shipping Docker. All right, great, so new pipeline or auto discover Jenkins files. So we can create a new pipeline from a single repository. I can select which repository, or I can have it scan all of my repositories inside of the selected organization and find any that contain a Jenkins file. All right, so let's actually, before I do that, head on over here. I'm gonna go to shipping Docker repository and we'll see that we have a Jenkins file in there, right here. So the Jenkins file is a special syntax of Groovy, and it's fairly easy, but you have to kind of Google around to figure out how to do everything. The first thing to do is to see the stages of the pipeline. So I have three stages in our pipeline. The first is build, and then we have test, and then if everything passes the test and I'm on the master branch, it's gonna to go to the package step, which will build my code into a new Docker image. And then this is all wrapped in try catch stuff so that we can catch any errors. And even if we do have an error, we run develop down, which is my helper script in my application that just shuts down Docker containers when we're done running them. So in our try catch in the build stage, we grab the Git repository that we are testing against. And then within the repositories, I have certain scripts. So this is going to run a shell script. My code base, the shippingdocker.com code has a develop script. It's just called develop. I do develop up dash D to spin up my containers. 
develop composer install to run composer install within my containers. I then grab a secrets file that I have in S3 to get the .m file for my Laravel application. And then I run key generate. Now this is gonna be for testing. So I don't care if it's a specific key in this case, but I need it to add a generated key to create a key inside of my .m file that's new. Okay, then if that all passes, we go to the stage testing where it just says my application environment is testing and run the test command that's part of my develop script. And the develop script just runs PHP unit, again, inside of Docker. And then finally, if that passes and the environment.branch name variable is master, in other words, if I push to the master branch, then go to the package branch, which just runs a Docker build script, which builds my code into a Docker image and pushes it up to a Docker registry, a Docker private repository, a, a registry of images, in other words. Now, yours might not be this complex. You may just grab Git, and then you may just run PHP unit and then be done with it. And that could be your two stages, build and test. And then maybe you could even have another stage for alerting or something or sending information to Slack or something like a deploy script where it automatically deploys. All that is up to you. This is basically just shell scripts doing stuff. Now, I like to keep the shell scripts within the Git repository. So we see I have our develop script that I just referenced a bunch. And this just grabs some environment variables and basically just tells it how to run Docker commands. So it'll use Docker Compose. And if we say develop composer, do something, it'll run composer in a Docker container. Same thing with test. Test just runs PHP unit within our PHP container. NPM and Yarn and all that good stuff will run stuff in our node containers. So it's basically just a wrapper to make using Docker a bunch easier. So you can actually see the shipping Docker course if you want details on that. But basically what I want to just show you is that the Jenkins file is what is used to run stuff inside of your pipeline. And the steps inside of the pipeline that I have defined are build, test, and package. Head back over here. I have to reselect some of these options for some reason. I'll let it auto discover Jenkins files and then we can create pipelines for that. So this is going to scan each repository inside of the shipping Docker organization. You see I have four, one of which is private. And then it's going to discover ones with Jenkins files. There's only one here. And that will set up and it'll start trying to build it. And we have a nice sun for health, but it hasn't started to run and build this yet. This is actually going to fail somewhat quickly because I haven't installed all the dependencies that my application needs. So I'm going to click on into this. Duration 23 seconds. We can see it's actually doing something. It's running the Jenkins file stuff. So I have Docker installed. It's going to actually be able to get a good bit into this process before failing. And what it's going to fail on is at the very end because I don't have a Docker private registry hooked into our server, but this does need one in order to finish the package step. So after it packages it, it's going to try to push to that Docker registry, but that's not there for it to push to. But what you can see that, though is that it's doing the stages. It's on the build stage, and after it gets through the build stage, it'll go through test, and we'll see a new stage here, and then finally package. Okay, great. And this actually failed earlier than I thought. We can see the output of the shell script. Here it's trying to grab the environment file that I have stored in S3, which has a bunch of secrets in it. And it can't because this server doesn't have access to that key. And actually the AWS command doesn't exist. I didn't install that. So if I wanted to move forward, I'd have to install the AWS command so I could use S3 and make sure that this server has access to the shipping Docker secrets bucket where it's trying to grab the file from. So what we can see here real quick is that the Blue Ocean UI is pretty nice. We see we have separate pipelines. I have one for the shipping docker.com repository because it's the only one with the Jenkins file. We can uh, filter by branch. I've only pushed to the master branch. And then we can see the status of a specific build. After three minutes and eight seconds, it failed on this shell script where it had an exit code of 127. So anytime where your shell script fails, this will mark the build as failed as well. Now we can see after it failed, there's another shell script that runs. And that's because we have that condition, that finally block, where it runs develop down. So this way I don't have Docker containers up and running in a broken state after a failed build. It still cleans up after itself. So in the next video, we'll fix up these errors and get this up and running. And then we'll cover a little bit more about the Jenkins file.